And we have been getting lots and lots of questions about COVID-19, the complications it can cause. That's why our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is here once again today to answer them. Thank you Thank once you. again. Yes. She's here all the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, some symptoms more severe than others. Somebody asks, why does that happen? Why does somebody die from the virus and other people just have you know, not, not much going on. Yeah, great question. So it all depends on the body's immune response to the virus. So when we get infected with the virus, the virus enters the lung and then it actually turns the lung into little coronavirus factories. So it starts making more and more virus. That's that incubation period we talk about where you may have a cough or you may have no symptoms at all. But if you get an immune response, you can see on this chest X-ray, your lungs start to fill up with fluid. So it's the immune response itself that can actually cause some of those complications because as your lungs fill up with fluid, they don't work as well for oxygenation. That's when you start feeling short of breath. You can end up in the ICU. And we've been talking about how older people are more at risk than younger people, but younger people can have some of these issues too, right? Yeah, and in fact, younger people have very robust immune systems. So sometimes the younger person's immune system responds in an exaggerated fashion. So it's not just the virus, but it's the immune response to the virus that also causes the complications. I know you've answered this before, but uh, people are still asking it. If you get this virus and recover, can you get it again? So we think most likely yes, and that's what Dr. Fauci says. We have no reason to believe it doesn't behave like other respiratory viruses. Having said that, there have been some cases reports in China of people who may have gotten reinfected or had reactivation of their virus. So we're not sure what the science behind that is, whether your immunity goes down over time or whether the virus may be changing. But for the most part, once you get it, we think you'll be immune to it. Okay. And this is an interesting question. I've thought of this myself. Uh, is it safe to order flowers as gifts for people? This viewer says that uh, her 70-something-year-old uh, grandma is having a birthday soon, and she won't be able to see her, obviously, so she's thinking about sending her flowers. Yeah, so if you're sending flowers, those are probably okay because it's a respiratory virus, so, it, you know, it's unlikely to be contaminated. But if you're sending a gift that's made of plastic or steel or something else that may be coming from an infected area, be sure to have grandma wipe it down, wash her hands before she touches her face, before she interacts with the gift. Of course, there's the delivery person who's got to take the flowers to grandma. That's true, <laughs> yep, yep. And so wipe down the outside of the flowers or throw away the packaging. I got a package yesterday and I opened it outside my house and I threw away the box and then I brought it into the house and washed my hands. Yeah, that's interesting. I heard one doctor say yesterday that they believe that virus can live on cardboard for 48 hours. So if you get a box from Amazon, they say leave it out there for a couple of days before you bring it in. Yeah, they said uh, 24 hours was the study the New England Journal just okay. did a couple of days ago, but exactly right that it can survive on cardboard surfaces and the temperature and all that stuff can prolong the survival as well. So. I would just throw out the box, leave it in the garage or whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. As always, thank you for joining us.